I'm a stay-at-home dad of three little ones, all under the age of six. So the majority of my days is spent trying to keep them occupied with one activity or another. When they do settle down, give me a little bit of a breather, it's usually so they can watch Ryan's Toy Time or Little Baby Bum on YouTube. And I'll stream it on the big screen TV in the den. Once they've settled, I'd whip out my phone and distract myself with a few articles on BuzzFeed or check my Instagram. It's usually the same old people posting boring updates. But on Monday morning, something new popped up. Like just about every other user on Reddit, I got a notification about a new experience from my community called RPAN. The teaser said I had a right to be intrigued, and I was. Soon I learned that the initials stood for the Reddit Public Access Network, and the idea behind it was to allow users to stream live feed from anywhere in the world. Be able to do anything, as long as it was safe for work. I soon found myself immersed in watching videos of people petting their cats, people practicing their drums, even a guy doing the dab repeatedly. I was in love. This experience was ten times better than anything I'd ever seen before. It was, it was revolutionary. So I thought. On the second day, when I got a chance to check the feed out on the official subreddit, I found out that a few people were spamming the channel with ridiculous memes or petitioning Reddit admins to make it a permanent feature. I signed such a petition, and at the time I was all for it, but now I'm not so sure. It's because of what happened just yesterday, and I noticed a string of binary pop up while I was swiping the broadcasts. Intrigued, I used a binary text converter and found out that it spelled out the phrase, send help. That gave me pause. I went back to Reddit to make sure I wasn't the only one, and sure enough, a few other viewers had mentioned they noticed the same thing. So like any good citizen on the internet, I clicked the report button. I didn't think anything of it. Until last night. The kids had gotten into bed, and I was able to settle in and watch another set of broadcasts before I turned in for the night. When I got online this time, I was surprised to find it looked like a man was driving around and asking Reddit for directions until he ran out of gas. Some of the comments were disturbing, as you can see. Joking about running over a pedestrian. <laughs> it's bizarre, but I guess par for the course when it comes to internet anonymity. Then I swiped and I saw what appeared to be someone walking around a trail with their dog. He was asking Reddit if he could shock the dog every time he got an upvote. Thankfully, the majority of people were downvoting him and telling him he was a sicko for even considering such a thing. I immediately clicked the report button and swiped to the next one. There was a young man holding what appeared to be a revolver. There was one bullet in the chamber, and his caption simply said, Roulette. He had nearly 25,000 people watching as he demanded to reach 100,000 or he would keep playing the game until he lost. After that, the broadcast got sinister. There was this kid roaming what appeared to be an abandoned building and he found a corpse. He was asking if he should piss on it. One of upvotes of yes, downvotes of no. There was a nurse who was walking around and just casually turning down the oxygen on different residents or senior citizens in the living home. I think I even heard one man struggling to breathe. In less than 13 minutes, I think I had reported almost 19 of the broadcasts I swiped through. It was taking a mental toll on me. Uh, and then I swiped again. I felt my hair stand on edge. This time it wasn't anything freaky or outlandish. It was just a man standing outside of a house and it looked like it looked like he was holding a revolver. Should I burglarize this house? Was his caption. The reason it frightened me so is because it's because it was my house. He had Nearly 33,000 people watching. I instantly tried to call 911, but my phone kept kicking me out and forcing me to stay on Reddit. I jumped in the chat and desperately tried to tell people what was happening. Help, this guy is right outside my house, I responded. A few people gave me lols or eye rolls. No one is taking me seriously. So I, so I ran to my kid's room and I peeked out the window. And sure enough, 
there, a thin teenage boy standing near my driveway, just standing, staring. Then he started to approach the house. I woke my oldest and I told her to hide in the closet. As I heard the shattering of glass, I, I rushed to the nursery. Cradling my baby in my arms, I tried desperately again to contact the police, but my phone just kept forcing me to stay on Reddit. Desperate and frantic, I saw on the broadcast the thief was now creeping into my living room. I did the only thing I could think of, and I tried, I tried to stream myself. As I clicked on and I shut my door of my bedroom with my baby in my arms, I heard the thief try to bust the door down. I said a prayer to God and I closed my eyes, talking to the Reddit viewing audience in the pitch black. I couldn't even see my phone. Please, someone, anyone, this guy is breaking into my house. Stop him before he hurts my family. Then I heard another sound. Like gagging, strangling. I dropped my phone. A moment later, the room was silent. I gingerly opened the door and I saw a tall man standing there over the thief's body. Thank God, I said, rushing and hugging the stranger. He apologized for breaking in. Saw your broadcast. It came as soon as I could, he admitted with a smile. Thanked him again. He advised I should contact the police as soon as possible. Saw his way back out of my house. He said, one day this whole thing would be a funny story about how Reddit brought us together. <laughs> my heart was still pounding, and I said thank you one more time, and then... Went to retrieve my phone, tried to call 911 again. Except when I picked it up, I felt my heart drop. As I saw the screen, I, I realized that that newcomer had been lying. It had been a distraction. I called up my oldest, trying to get her to respond. She was gone. He'd taken her. All I could do was slump on the floor in a fit of rage as I stared at the screen and I saw that that message was mocking me all across the internet. Sorry. Broadcasting has limited availability right now. Try again in a bit. Hey there once again kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I just wanted to give you a big thank you for watching tonight's video. If you guys ever wanted to help support the show, you can always do so if you watch the show on youtube.com slash mrcreepypasta, or find the Mr. Creepypasta Storytime podcast on iTunes, on Google Play, and on Spotify. And also, if you ever want to check out my wife's tea shop, it's etsy.com slash ivorymonoclete, where she sells hand-blended herbal teas in the theme of Dungeons and Dragons and Harry Potter and Final Fantasy and the like. You can find the link for it, as well as many, many, many other links, in the description down below. And, drumroll please, a big, big, big thank you to everybody supporting me at patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta. People such as... Tacia Lynn Gino Baga Arneo, Daniel Paulson, Trey Smiles, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Wayne Milstead, Dr. Strawberry, Chempinski, Ken Lando Higuchi, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Nicholas Saeed Elyasin, Buddy Burrows, Stephen Van Hus, Kai Albertson, Goonington, G Weevil 3, Chance Burnett, Diane Krause, Asia, Gabrielle DeBaca, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Cindy Barney, Titty Connoisseur, <laughs> really? Titty Connoisseur? Melissa Swegart, Dante Rao, Last Blade Song, Cross Rights, The Ginger Bros, Eliminator 86, Andrew Steinberg, Jason Sistma, Holy Realm, and Rafael Rodriguez. Thank you so much to you guys out there on Patreon, to all of you listening to either the podcast or the YouTube show. And that is everything, guys. Thank you so much for listening, and sweet dreams. <laughs>